Hello, this is Tom Fredrickson with the Victorian Woodshop. This is an informational video on our porch sawn balusters. Now, on the website at victorianwoodshop.com, you'll be able to see all the pictures and get a little bit more information. But I wanted to put a video up because this is such an unusual project for most people. Although it looks complicated just due to the amount of uh, balusters that you tend to need to cover a large area, particularly a large porch, the process is exactly the same as you start repeating it. We're going to go over it a little bit in this video. It's nothing that you can't do. It just takes a little bit of thought to get your timing out, your sizes, and everything else. Um, now, I brought some out as examples, you know, so you can see what a full section looks like. And all of our full sections are exactly 7 inches wide, going this way, and 30 inches tall. The reason for the 30 inches tall is it's kind of a standard size in the porch baluster uh, world. And the reason for that is, let's say this table is your deck porch. And you're going to be coming up probably about 4 inches, maybe as much as 6 inches, to run your rail across. And then attaching the balusters to that rail, and then another top rail going above this. So by the time you start adding up all the inches with the 30 inches, you're going to start achieving that three foot level, maybe a little bit more depending on what you want to do. Now another popular size is 27 inches. I can also make those. Just go ahead and give me a call. But the standard ones from the website are all the 30 inches, so it's easy for you to figure out. And I brought a few examples out so you can see the running patterns. We also make the half sizes. These come in real handy when you're covering a large span of area and you're putting your full sections up and then you come to that small area on the end. And rather than have you try to slice one uh, at your home, it's just a lot easier to take a half section, maybe make some adjustments on this if you have to. Another way to do it is to just take a plain board and cover up maybe a small little inch or two that you have if you want a nice tight look. And speaking of that, you don't really have to have them touching. Now here's what the pattern looks like when they're touching. But another popular way to do it is maybe spread them a half an inch apart and so that they're not touching. Really nice look. Another example, our baluster 80, so you can see a full section. And um, of course, if I go this way, I have to stop and think about it myself. So you can see what the repeating pattern looks like. Another one, one of my favorites. This is just really over the top. If you've got a true old Victorian, boy, this is definitely a beautiful look. All of our balusters are constructed from the same material. I use a three-quarter inch pine, solid pine. And l let me go over that three-quarter inch. <clears throat> Usually when people are putting these in a groove, and I brought an example out like this, but I'm going to get into that in a minute, um, you'll get a railing and you want a groove in it so you can put it in the groove and slide them in. So I sand these down just a slight bit less than a true three-quarters of an inch. That way a standard three-quarters of an inch groove will work for you. But while we're talking about railing systems, here's one that I really like and it's easy for you to do. Because you may not have the ability to route um, a groove in a long, say, a 10-foot piece of board. Or your local home center may not sell them. Well, do, do check, because a lot of them do. A real simple way to do it is to just take a 2x4. And I just brought a little example up. And run your 2x4, cut it, let's say, 10 feet long. And just take a strip of molding that you can pick up anywhere, glue it, nail it to your, uh, to your board, and then you can just take your balusters and slide them in like that. You're making your own groove, and it's a nice little way to do it because it also gives you a three-dimensional look. And then, of course, when you're done, take another one and put it on the board as well. So you've, what you've done is you've made your own groove. But it's a nice three-dimensional groove. Extremely easy to do. Um, a lot of people will go the flat end of a 2x4 or 2x6, something going down. But remember, if you have a long span, you're going to want to put in the middle of it some kind of a block there to kind of keep the weight up. However, if you uh, install them like that, you know, the skinny end up, you won't have to worry about that because that will take all the weight. Fun project to do. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, some of the pictures I've seen from homeowners is just unbelievable the difference it makes in your home. It's not a project that you have to worry about being scared away from. It, it, you can do it. It's going to take you a weekend to get it done. Uh, I send them out. Now the wood that I use, I buy it pre-primed. So now I've got all these primed for the video. 
but I don't send them out primed. Uh, what I do is I patch them up, I do all the stuff we have to do here in the shop, and the front and the back will of course still have a lot of the primer on it, but the sides where I do all the hand cutting out won't. That'll just be the raw wood. If you want me to prime them here in the shop, go ahead and talk to me and we can probably work something out. I always recommend a good latex paint. Um, I don't like spray systems. I talk to people about that all the time. I know it's quick and easy to do, but you just can't get the good coat of coverage that you can with a brush. And if you lay them out, paint one side, turn it over the next day, paint the other side, these are going to be out there in the full brunt of the weather and it will just save you from having to repaint them down the road. If you have any questions, <clears throat> do give me a call. That's what we're here for. Uh, I'd love to discuss your project with you. And for right now, this is Tom Fredrickson with the Victorian Woodshop. Go to the Woods Woodshop page at victorianwoodshop.com under the balusters, under the gingerbread catalog section, and you can see more pictures and a little bit more information.